Hey, Jared, how you doing, man? Hello, I'm doing well. Good to see you. I'm just glad I made it to my own breakout room. That's, that's the one thing I was concerned about. We're glad you're here too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, welcome everyone. This is an overview of the free Toast Host website. Uh, it is more or less uh, the, uh, the same thing that I did back in December on the Mentor Monday series that our district has been doing uh, this past year, which I have really enjoyed if I can only make it <laughs> to the meetings. Um, there, are, there, there are so many kids in this house. I don't, I don't know how many at, at any time, but um, I think three of them are currently here and they are all supposed to be quiet. So we will see how well that goes. You can judge my parenting based on, on, on how quiet the house is during this uh, nap, two, two sessions, um, two 30 minute sessions. So this first one is just about the free Toast Host uh, website that Toastmasters offers for you to build a club website. That's basically all it is. And the second one, we're gonna dive into specifically the agenda section of the, of the website, which I think is the most valuable aspect of the site uh, and uh, all the ins and outs and particulars that come into to building agendas for your club. Um, so that will be the second session just after, after this one. Uh, but we are, we're, yeah, so we're going to focus on the free Toast Host website. Now, uh, how many people have been to a website lately? Okay, good. All right. All right. That's a good step. Um, now, for, and uh, throughout this entire presentation, if you do have a question, a technical question, please feel free to go ahead and interrupt. Um, if I can catch it in the chat, I will, but I'm going to be sharing my screen, so I don't know if I'll be on Zoom uh, while, while those chats are coming in. But go ahead and, and raise your hand or, or interrupt and ask a question, and so that way we can go ahead and address your question while we're on that part of the website. Um, but so, me, Jared, uh, I? hi, I'm sorry. Would you like someone to kind of serve as your chat liaison? I, I, I do that in a lot of other sure. uh, yeah, situations go ahead and, because you if, won't if be able to see that. Right. If it doesn't seem like I'm picking up on the, on the chat coming through, go ahead and, and interrupt me and let me know. Okay. Um, so you can handle that. That'd be good. Uh, yeah, so uh, going to a website, what's a, somebody give me a suggestion, what's a, what's a, a website that you just personally, not necessarily like a, a technical work uh, kind of site that you went to, but what, personally, what's the last kind of website you might have visited? Like, sought YouTube. out. YouTube. Amazon. YouTube. What about like a, a, a location, like a, 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 a small business or... Uh, something like that. Amazon. <laughs> yeah, right. Amazon, the small business. <laughs> Scramble Jakes. What was which that? A, Scramble Jakes, which is a a breakfast place. Yes, here in that's a perfect example. What? So, what were you looking for when you went to that? I was uh, double checking hours. I was considering going for a visit, checking their menu. So. Right. Yes, that's exactly. So that's exactly the the uh, the example that I had in mind. Uh, it was I think it was this past Tuesday. We celebrated our 19th wedding anniversary. Um, yay for me! And um, so that was a good thing. And so for I, I don't know maybe the first time since COVID, we we were able to just break away and uh, and and be on our own for a night. And I uh, the the one that came to mind, the place to take her. Uh, was something we found on the internet, which was a cheese conveyor belt. Uh, I don't know if you, yeah, right? So it's a restaurant where there's a conveyor belt in front of you and they just send plates of cheese around the conveyor belt and you just pick them up and eat them. I mean, like how glorious is that, right? <laughs> so, so it's at this place called the L&L Market and there's a number of shops, a number of restaurants and we just spent the night there. But I went, so that, that was the idea. I want a restaurant. Here's what I have in mind. I went to the site. I needed to know where it was, when the hours were, and there were all kinds of shops and restaurants and they all had different hours. So I had to go to each site to look at the hours, uh, where it was located, if there were any particulars, you know, with COVID and stuff like that, it could be, could be uh, special instructions. So all these details uh, that I needed to know, and it was 
I must have done a good job because it was all exactly as I planned uh, to, to make it happen. And that's, that's what a website like this is for. Uh, that's the purpose of having a club website uh, is for something, something uh, in relation to like going to a restaurant. Uh, so why have a club website? There's a few, few reasons why I would give you. One of those is, uh, is information, just like at a restaurant. What are your hours? Where's your location? Uh, what are the details? When does the club meet? Things like that. Another one is is publicity, and you can uh, you can use that in different ways. But I I'll, I'll warn against thinking uh, that that you not have the wrong idea about publicity as it is uh, for your club. That setting up this website and putting some pictures and information on it, and suddenly the world is just going to come flocking to your site because you have such a great a great website up. That it's not that's not going to work like that. Um, it will work if they're looking for you. So that's the idea. Like to, I, put, I put the marketing and the branding more on Toastmasters International and the district as a whole to get people interested in Toastmasters. So leadership development, if you just if you think somebody's going to find your, your club site just searching leadership development, it's not going to happen. But they might stumble on Toastmasters. And then if they want a club in their local area, they're going to look at find my club. And your club can be linked from toastmasters.org uh, directly to your site. And that's how they get in touch with you. Um, so that's what it's for. So, so for information, for publicity, uh, and then for club management, uh, there's a lot of uh, pieces to this where you can keep your documents in the same place, keep your, uh, your meeting schedules, your agendas, uh, some past records uh, in the same place. Uh, and so it's good for club uh, management. And then record keeping. There's a, there's a one particular that I love about record keeping and that, that can really be handy. Um, so two, two in particular, uh, one for the secretary and one for you personally uh, that I really like. And so who is in charge of setting up this site? So maybe you already have one and you just need to know how to use it better. Maybe you've never signed, maybe you've never started one and your club doesn't have one at all. Um, so let me go through and show you how that happens. I think I'm showing you my, uh, my, browser. Everybody can see I'm on a Toastmasters International website. Yes. All right. Sounds good. So the place you would go is toastmastersclubs.org with a plural on both of those words. Toastmastersclubs.org. And it's, this is the free Toast Toast website. Um, so it's, it's just a plug and play kind of website. It, it's, it's the, the entire framework is already built for you to simply just edit different parts and pieces so that it fits your particulars of your club. Um, so it's real super easy. So if you've never signed up for one before, uh, then all you would do is, is uh, go here, scroll down a little bit, put in your club number, the president's uh, name and email address, and they have the ability to, uh, to match those and then send the president a, uh, an email with a verification and then you're in. You create a password upon doing that uh, and then your site is set up and it's ready to go. Um, and that's as, that's as hard as, as it is. So I did this for another club uh, as a, I was their uh, mentor getting started. And so I did it on their behalf and, and the email went to the president and then we, you know, we shared the, the admin password privately between us. And I was able to go in and, and set that up uh, for them. Uh, so see, you can see a club website, which looks like this and this is what it looks like. This is a sample website. You can poke around and see what it is, but I mean, it'd probably be better to go on toastmasters.org and just view other club websites. Um, so uh, I can show you probably really quickly how that would work. This find a club button up there. And then you can just put in, you know, your uh, three, seven, two, one. I don't know if that's, maybe that's Nashville. Um, yeah, so, and here's a bunch of clubs in Nashville and you can just go around and click on some of these and view their, oops, uh, view their website. And this is fun for me because I like seeing what other clubs do with their, with their site. Now, if they had one set up, I think it would be linked here and I'm not seeing it. So I should have done that ahead of time so you could actually uh, see how that's linked. Uh, th visit this website, there we go. So they have one. So this is somebody else's site. Yeah, it looks completely different than mine. I love that. Uh, but the framework you'll find out is exactly the same. How this side menu works, how the page in the middle works, 
Uh, and then all the information that's listed kind of below and around is the framework is the same, but the look of it is completely different. Here's my local club's website. So you can, you can yeah, uh, edit all of this to, to the particulars of how you want it. All right, so who, who is set, uh, set up? The president can, it has to initiate that process, but who's in charge of, of actually going through all of this and setting it up? That can be anyone and that can be shared uh, between different members of the club. Uh, so it doesn't have to be any one person in particular. The way that I got involved uh, in this for the most part was when I was the uh, VP of PR. So the marketing uh, wing of it. And I was pretty good at computers anyway, so it was a natural fit. So I, I enjoyed uh, setting up like event information and using graphics and pictures on different pages and things like that. So that, that was part, one of my favorite parts. Uh, the VPE is another person who would want to be involved in this because of the you want to be able to keep up with uh, the, the agenda and people getting signed up for roles, things like that. Um, so that's that's a good person to also be involved in this. Or if you just have a simply a volunteer who's good at computers and this is what they want to do, then let them do it. You know, <laughs> let that happen. Do do not yeah. Uh, what's the? Well, I had a phrase. Um, do not uh, muzzle the ox. There we go. I think that's the phrase. Uh, all right. So once we're once we're once we're here and we have our blank site set up, uh, then you would launch the admin console so you can log it in as as an admin and begin editing your site. Uh, so to to log in, actually you would log in as a site admin, and the way you would do that is uh, with your club number and a private. Uh, I can't speak and type at the same time. Um, and a private password. So multiple people. So there's only one admin login. So if you're going to have a couple people work on it, they need to share that password. But it would be good practice every uh, election cycle to update that password with the new people who are going to be volunteering and using this site, right? So just uh, as a you know general rule of thumb, you 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 know you, you wouldn't want past members and things like that to be able to. Uh, or just stale passwords to uh, to be here because there is a, a little bit of private information that might be back here not not socials or anything like that but uh, phone numbers and addresses and emails and things like that would be available all right so we will launch our admin console that's where almost all of this editing is going to happen was through this uh, through this admin console here uh, and the first thing you uh, first thing uh, the default place is the website settings here um, but there, are, this is how it is organized through here. So for uh, for each of these, you click on. There's a whole grouping of of things that you can do below. Um, so you can do that there. I think I'm on the largest. Yeah. So this, depending on the size of your computer, you can enlarge this this uh, dialog box, this uh, modal here. So basic settings: the name of your club, a little description. Uh, some keywords, you know, like where you're located um, might be good to, to have in there and a website alias. So website alias would be the, the, the sub URL or the subdomain name in your URL. So it's going to be by default, your club number dot toastmastersclubs.org. And that's that by default, that number is going to work. If you want to put in your club name or maybe a club nickname of some kind, uh, you can put that in here. Uh, it just, you know, it needs to make sense. Uh, I, th I think I joked at the last one, like, I'm not sure if anybody knows how to spell the Diagnosophist Club, um, which is our, our advanced club in, in Donaldson. So maybe there's a, a short nickname that you can give that club. I don't know. Hey, Jared. Yes. Real quick. Can you use capital letters in that website alias or does it have to be all lowercase? Um, the way way URLs work in general is is that they really are lowercase by default. Um, I don't think URLs see the difference between upper and lowercase. Okay. So you really want it to be uh, consistently. Now you can display it whenever you're writing it out in your marketing materials or or things. So if if it if it looks neater or if it looks like more understandable to have a capital letter, it's not going to make a difference. Um, but the okay. way the URL, URL works in general is, is lowercase. And then your club number will still work. 
after you set this alias. So if somebody was used to having the old club number as part of the, the URL, it would still work. Uh, and then where you're locally, where you're uh, local for their Eastern or Central time zone there. Uh, I'm gonna try to pick up the pace just a little bit. Uh, so appearance, this is how you're the, you saw the difference between their club and our club. That's what all these uh, drop down color pickers are for. Um, so you can play with that and see what it all is. Um, so one thing about this is that you want to, for the most part, you want to stay in the branding guide of Toastmasters. Uh, you really never want to, to venture off of that too far. And that can be found on Toastmasters.org under resources and brand portal. If you need to know particulars of, of what that the branding guide is and the colors that you, you should use. Um, now Zoom is in my way, so I can't click on. There we go. Um, but fortunately for us, some of those are pre-chosen in here. So like this red and this gold are Toastmasters colors. So it's a little bit easier to, to know what they are. You can increase the font size. Uh, this is the background image that I have. You see that blue line on our page? That's what this image is. It's one of the Toastmasters um, images that they provide. And then hide menu links here. Now it could get overwhelming to put everything that you can possibly do on the website. Uh, like the district, for example, you the district wants to have as much of information available as possible because they are kind of the central house, but your club may not need all of that information too. Um, so you can choose what you think is most fitting and what you hide is uh, on that menu we were looking at is not going to show up on this side menu here. So that you can just click the ones that you want to hide uh, from that, that sidebar menu. Uh, and then, yeah, members only features. Um, so that'll, you'll see that pop up from time to time uh, on what, what you want uh, to be members only. If there's maybe some slightly more private information that you just want the members to access, that'll come up again and again. Uh, this is the homepage page. Uh, that uh, So you can set up as soon as somebody comes to your site, this is what it looks like. Um, it's basically, if you've ever worked in a Word document, it's more or less those same types of, of options that you have here. You know, it's HTML uh, driven uh, features. So you can bold text, italicize it, you know, um, justify it in different ways, add in um, you know, images and features and things like that. So it's pretty flexible, especially if you know how to use all of this, you know, hyperlink some of your text. Uh, that's all pretty basic. Uh, there's a wide resource of uh, stock images that Toastmasters has available. So if you're just looking for, you know, placeholders or things that look, you know, fresh and bright, look into Toastmasters uh, stock images and you'll, there's plenty of options there. Uh, meaning info and directions. Now, when we go here, there's, uh, again, most of these at the top are going to be default for all sites. So meeting infor information and directions, this is the page that you're editing. So we put in a little extra, for, you know, we used to be in person, of course, and so now we're meeting via Zoom, but here's the information that would have been uh, otherwise there. And then down below is, you saw that we had a Google uh, map on the page. This is how you would, you would put that in. If you need to know how to get that, let me know, but basically you just put the information into uh, Google Maps and there's an option to get the iframe uh, code for that location on the page. Uh, social links, uh, if you have Facebook, Twitter, URL, other things set up, that is automatically gonna show up when those are populated down here on the sidebar. So that uh, Facebook link goes out to our Facebook page. And then that's about it for there. A floater message, as soon as you pop into, now I think I've already hit this page once, so it may not do it again. Yeah, I've already closed it out, but there's a little pop-up floater message that'll, that'll go here. So if you have a special announcement that you need to show, then you would use that, uh, that pop-up uh, floater message there. When I use Jason says, what are you signing up for today? What role are you signing up yes. for today? Right, yeah, yeah. So that's for member message. So uh, that's the one that we want people to, to see when they, when they get into our site. Now this one, access settings. Um, so this is you can you can choose which uh, which 
members are allowed to access which site parts of the site um, or which uh, leaders are, are able to do certain functions within the site. And we can see that later. Uh, administration info, website to statistics. This is when you're getting really deep into Google Analytics. So that's a, that's a level two kind of thing. Let's go ahead and go into member management here and, uh, and see that, uh, so with member management, you have to uh, load these in yourself of who the members are. It's not gonna come preloaded. Um, so, but basically all you do is to add a new one is you put their name, their email address, and then click save. So you see he enter new info and click save. Um, so that's how you add somebody in. They get an automatic email and they can log in um, by setting up a password. And then you can set the role of the person, of the, of the member. And that's how everything, a lot of other stuff is based on who's designated per, uh, per each of these roles. Um, yeah, uh, so the, here's a, a handful of different similar setup. So if you, if you want to keep record of who was a guest to your meeting or former members or, oh my, we ran out of time me, real quick. Garrett, yeah, you are. On yeah. Time. A lot of those have the, their email addresses is at nasba.org. Uh-huh. Is that a, a company? Are you, are you a company club? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. We're an Never open mind. company club. So almost all of them are. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can sort of manage members this way. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm gonna try to get to anything vital that I can uh, see before we have to get kicked out of here. Um, emailing, uh, well, no, let's, let's, let's see. Custom web pages. So I'm gonna do these two things and then we'll be done. Um, file manager, you can upload files uh, here so you can keep track of different, uh, of you know, previous agendas or, or flyers or things like that that you want people to download. We have a guest packet that we like to send uh, guests. And you can see here, if I, if I were to click on this link, I would get the URL. I could copy the link address of that, of that document. And it's, it's, it's public, acce publicly accessible if you set it as such. And so people who visit your page can see it. And then the way that I would use this is by going to our custom pages and setting up a link or a page to display that information. So you can see here that I have the speak up NASBA. Ah, we're leaving in one minute. All right. Um, I put my speak up NASBA guest packet and I put post pasted the URL to that document and, and set it as a link instead of a page. So when we go to our Speak Up NASBA site, you can see that my Speak Up NASBA guest packet is linked here and it just downloads as a PDF for our guests to see and use and have as a reference material and a thank you for coming. Um, that ended really quickly. I apologize. Um, I, let's see, hopefully you can, we're, we're gonna leave the breakup room too. Uh, well, contact me if you can find me. I, I, I didn't put my email in the chat, but, um, but uh, you can find me through Speak Up NASBA or Jared Thronberry, and I'll be happy to help you, mentor you through setting up these, uh, this website at any time.